Hi, my name's Kevin. Let me begin by sharing a little bit about who I am. This is my family, my wife Lene on the left and our daughters Bethany and Barbara. My wife and I have been married for 27 years and she is a grade six teacher. As a family, we've always been highly connected to the land. Our daughter Bethany has completed her second year of elementary education in Washington State and Barbara was recently accepted into vet school at the University of Calgary and then changed her mind and has now been accepted into a couple of doctor of physical therapy programs. They're both taking a gap year and living and volunteering at a kids camp and retreat center on the island of Oahu, Hawaii and we'll be visiting them pretty soon. As I said, my connection to the land has always been a part of my life. That being said, I'd like to acknowledge that the land that we are on, including the entire proposed area for this research, south of Edmonton and north of Calgary, is located on Treaty 6 and Treaty 7 territory with respect to histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada whose presence enrich our communities. This picture with 60 canoes is from three years ago at Twin Lakes, just outside of Rocky Mountain House, where I taught lake ecology and paddling to 120 grade seven, eight students. For the past 20 years, I've been leading out in a grade five, six curriculum based outdoor school for 10 schools. Here we have a few students doing pond life identification and pond ecology. Growing up between the ages of nine through 16, I spent many weekends at either Taquania Nature Center under the mentorship of the naturalist there, Mr. Duncan, or on solo canoe trips on the Grand River where I studied many aspects of nature. These were formative years as I still reflect back to my early beginnings. I've had the privilege of leading almost 400 nights of backcountry trips in a wide variety of locations with a wide variety of people. I'm currently chair and assistant professor at Berman University in the outdoor leadership department. Here are a few of my students in one of my wilderness navigation courses. Why am I doing this research? Truthfully and simply, it comes from a lifetime of inquiry. I wanna know more about the field of outdoor learning. I wanna know more about outdoor learning in Western Canada. For a long time, I've had questions like, how many people in Alberta are using the outdoors to teach curriculum? And what teaching strategies are helping them be successful outdoors? Now let's dig deeper. I'll begin with a definition of school-based outdoor learning. Outdoor learning is learning in an outside setting or an outdoor classroom while covering required curriculum. A school-based outdoor learning location is a space where teachers and students have experiences that would not usually occur indoors, such as school grounds, natural environments in close proximity to the school, and outside classrooms. During a very comprehensive investigation on outdoor learning, I discovered a clear lack of research or data here in Alberta. In a province that has such diversity in landscape, from mountains to prairies, to warmer temperatures to the south, to deep snowfall areas, rivers, streams, lakes, wide variety of plants and animals, Alberta has much to be proud of and it provides an incredible resource for school-based outdoor learning. With my research, I'll broaden this field of knowledge. Along with this, I learned that there's a definite mixed methods research methodological gap. Few outdoor learner researchers have chosen to integrate data from multiple sources to address their questions. To put it clearly, this research is significant and the fact that much has been written about the importance of utilizing outdoor areas for teaching, yet there's very little research that discusses the experiences of K through nine teachers' involvement in outdoor learning experiences. Even more specifically, no research has been completed to determine the level of involvement of outdoor learning among K through nine teachers in Western Canada, nor about teachers' success with outdoor learning. I have three important research questions. First, what are the experiences of K through nine teachers with outdoor learning in Alberta? Then what do teachers identify as key factors for successful outdoor learning? Finally, how can teachers ensure the quality of outdoor learning in K through nine classrooms? I'd like to walk you through just a few quotes from my extensive review of the literature on outdoor learning. 
the benefits of outdoor learning is broad reaching to students and teachers. Students that have had the opportunity to engage in outdoor learning have demonstrated an increased ability to think creatively and critically and an improved performance on standardized tests. Teachers have reported renewed enthusiasm for learning. Spending time in natural environments as a child was associated with adult pro-environmental attitudes. Feelings of being connected with the natural world and a stronger sense of place. Children who took part in school gardening projects improved in scientific learning more than those who did not and had healthier eating habits. As well, forest schools and school gardening projects were associated with improved social skills. When a green school ground is not used as an outdoor classroom, important opportunities to maximize the potentials are lost. The space, in effect, is left to speak for itself, with students making sense by their own accord. Outdoor learning in natural areas can be an enrichment for children, enabling them to learn beyond the borders of their classroom, and has a potential to directly and indirectly strengthen primary schools' educational practice. A widening circle of researchers believe that the loss of natural habitat or the disconnection from nature, even when it is available, has enormous implications for human health and child development. They say the quality of exposure to nature affects our health at almost a cellular level. As I considered both the literature surrounding outdoor learning and my research questions, it became clear I needed to view this research with a pragmatic approach. John Dewey and David Kolb are both educational philosophers that view learning through the lens of experience. In his book, Experience and Education, Dewey states that in order to accomplish its ends both for the individual learner and for society, it must be based upon experiences, which is always the actual life experiences of some individual. He's clear and concise. Experience should be integral to learning. His theory of experience model looks like this. In an outdoor learning activity, a student's previous experience affects how the learner will make meaning of current experiences, and in turn, it will affect the development of future experiences. Along with the continuity of educational experiences, outdoor learning is affected by external conditions like culture, weather, social norms, and curriculum and also internal conditions like fears, interests, ability, and confidence, which shape the experience and promotes learning. The work of Kolb is more recent, and as an educational philosopher, he is rooted in the same experiential learning foundations as John Dewey. Kolb stresses that he is rooted in pragmatism and expresses in his book, Experiential Learning, that knowledge results from the combination of grasping and transforming experience he continues saying that grasping experience refers to the process of taking in information and transforming experiences is how individuals interpret and act on that information. Kolb suggests that the learner uses the experience to explore abstract concepts to broaden their knowledge and understanding. This means that the learner should interpret the experience in order to move towards abstract thinking and learning. Kolb believed that learning occurs through concrete experiences, reflective observation, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. It is through the interactions and tensions of all these learning domains that a learner broadens their knowledge. Outdoor learning supports an epistemological foundation of pragmatic subjectivism in which the learner is involved in practical and realistic experiences to develop their knowledge base on their reflection of what took place. The learner is placed in a position to interpret their experiences individually. Pragmatics like Dewey and Kolb place the learner at the center of the learning process while interacting with their environment. The experience is influenced internally by the learner's values, cultures, and beliefs, while also being compared to previous experiences. Evaluating information and experiences this way is subjective. Each learner brings with them their collection of values, past experiences, cultural backgrounds, and beliefs, and uses these as a foundation to interpret their experience. In this research study, pragmatic subjectivism provides a solid grounding to my methodological choice and research topic. 
The research questions will be viewed through practical experiences, internal and external influences, and reflective observation. By using a sequential mixed methods research methodology, I'll be able to develop new knowledge based on learning experiences. Let me define mixed methods research. Mixed methods research is research that involves quantitative and qualitative data collection in which integration or mixing of data is an integral part of the process. It provides multiple ways of seeing that addresses research inquiries from various angles in order to gain breadth and depth to the data. Cresswell and Cresswell tell us that the core assumption of this form of inquiry is that the integration of qualitative and quantitative data yields additional insights beyond the information provided by either the quantitative or qualitative data alone. To be more specific, my methodological choice is explanatory sequential mixed methods research. I intend to intentionally sequence the research process in order to use one set of data to better explain another set of data. The next slide should provide some context. There are three phases to this research. In phase one, I'll be sending out a pilot questionnaire to three teachers that are highly involved in outdoor learning in order to identify any challenges in understanding of the instructions or questions, as well as to evaluate the validity of the questions. Their feedback will be considered in making any changes to the questions or instructions. Also in phase one, I'll be sending out this edited pilot questionnaire to 10 schools in Alberta that are not included in my study. I'll analyze the data with SPSS data analysis and look for inconsistencies and responses that might be identified as challenges to the questionnaire. In phase two, I'll be sending out a digital survey to K through nine teachers in the defined study area. I'll be using SurveyMonkey to collect the data in phase two. This is quantitative data collection with about 30 questions and a goal of having 100 respondents. I'll then analyze the data using SPSS data analysis. From this analysis, I'll look for areas that need more exploration or explanation, and I'll develop approximately four to six open-ended interview questions with the potential of follow-up questions. In phase three, I'll conduct six interviews of teachers that earlier completed the questionnaire that are largely involved in outdoor learning and who have indicated that they'd be willing to participate in an in interview. I'll audio record the interview, transcribe the data, and analyze it with NVivo data analysis software. Data strands from both the quantitative and qualitative data will be analyzed with a side-by-side -side joint data display diagram. This data analysis takes place to confirm, disconfirm, or expand new aspects of the collected data. The combined data seeks to explain the quantitative data while providing a final analysis of each domain studied to determine new insights. By thoroughly viewing the integrated data, I'll move the research process from simply linking the data strands to meaningfully combining the data strands. This will provide a more explicit mixing purpose in relation to mixed methods research. The side-by-side -side joint data display diagram is a common method for presenting and analyzing data in mixed methods research. This allows the data results of the quantitative and qualitative investigations to be viewed and assessed together while looking for deeper integration meanings. The potential population of this study includes K-9 through teachers south of Edmonton and north of Calgary in the Wolf Creek, Red Deer, Chinook's Edge, Wild Rose, Wetaskiwin, Battle River, Clearview, and Buffalo Trail school divisions. This broad population includes both urban and rural school settings, a diversity of outdoor learning sites in a variety of ecological landscapes, diverse social groups, as well as a wide cultural diversity. For this research, there are a number of ethical considerations that I'm looking at, right from the planning stages to later in the final steps of research, a reflexive view of the process is important. A constant evaluation, considering and reconsidering all the parts of the research. 
As well, I'll soon submit a request for ethics approval from the University of Alberta. I've had to consider and contend with vulnerabilities that might affect my research, including the effects of COVID-19 pandemic on data collection. In this research, participants will receive a letter of introduction and consent form. Participation is completely voluntary and all information will be kept confidential. As well, participants can opt out of the research at any time with no consequences. Finally, when the research is complete, the results of the research will be made available to the participants. In the future, I intend to expand this research. I plan to repeat this research to compare outdoor learning among regions of Alberta, as well as with high school students, to compare outdoor learning among people groups and between Canadian provinces, to look at how or if outdoor learning affects students' ability to understand curriculum-based content, to explore to what extent students and teachers enjoy learning outdoors. If all goes well, I'll be trying to follow this general timeline to complete all data collection by June 2022 before teachers are on summer break. I can then finish analyzing the data during the summer and begin writing my dissertation. Some may ask the question, so what? Does any of this really matter? This research has the potential to be revolutionary in promoting outdoor learning practices amongst teachers in Alberta and with even further benefits to teachers in Canada and abroad. By understanding the experiences of K-9 teachers with outdoor learning and identifying the current state of outdoor learning in Alberta, educators can then begin to make connections to others in the field that are experiencing success. As well, in very simple terms, success is contagious we're able to look at examples of others' success and then begin to reconstruct these narratives for ourselves. This research will provide much needed data that can direct teacher training programs and teacher professional development by identifying what outdoor learning is actually taking place in our schools and how outdoor learning success is achieved Administrators can then make decisions that are data-driven, providing targeted educational experiences for teachers and pre-service teachers. Finally, the development of a framework for increasing the quality of outdoor learning experiences at the K-9 level has the potential to enhance the validity and acceptance of outdoor learning practices among teachers. A framework that easily identifies how to successfully teach outdoors will help teachers feel more comfortable in taking students outdoors for educational experiences. If you have any questions about my research or simply want to share your story or express your interest in using the outdoors for teaching and learning, just drop me an email. I'd love to connect with you.